Hi, I'm Elizabeth Galvin. I'm the curator of the African Rock Art Image Project here at the British Museum. Today we're going to be talking about photo manipulation and how we can see rock art that's invisible to the naked eye. Rock art is often susceptible to damage by both natural and man-made events. Oftentimes the rock art is out on an outcrop or a boulder that's out in the open. So sunlight, wind, rain, a lot of factors can make rock art fade. But one of the biggest threats to rock art is actually humans. People chipping away rock art for building material or souvenirs, graffiti, are all destroying rock art, which has been practiced for tens of thousands of years throughout Africa. But now, through different technologies, we've recently been able to bring back the details, seemingly lost by time, by taking photographs of the faded rock art and then taking these photos and sending them through various photo manipulation programs. What we're actually able to do is turn up different pigments and run it through various filters. For example, this piece here just shows a completely faded rock face. We don't know what's really going on in this tableau. There's possibly a quadruped, which is a four-legged animal of some sort, and we really can't see much else. But when we run it through this one lens, we're actually able to see an elephant, shown here in bright pink. Now, this wouldn't have been the actual color of the pigment that was used. But instead, software is reacting to the traces of the pigment, so we're able to see the outline and the shading of what it would have looked like. Run it through another lens, and we're actually able to see a full hunt scene, complete with archers, uh, and there's also some swimming figures that we can see that are going around here. You would have walked right by all of this without really being able to see it out in the open. So it's amazing what computers can help us understand about rock art now. Another rock face here that we can see that almost looks completely blank, run it through one filter and we've got these bright turquoise horses that are flying through. Now this style of horse is actually called the flying gallop and is seen through various areas of the Sahara such as Chad and the surrounding countries. Legs are shown outstretched as if it is flying and galloping through the air. But when we look closely we can see one human figure that doesn't quite match the other riders in this scene. We can tell that this figure was most likely painted first, as unlike all the other writers on the rock face, this figure has legs hanging below, which shows that he was probably painted first walking and then a horse was added later. We don't know why this horse was added. It could have been part of a religious ritual. It could have been added for artistic merit. Maybe somebody just felt bad for the guy and wanted to give him a ride. Through computer programs like this, we're able to see how rock art was changed and adapted. But most importantly, creating a record like this, we're able to prevent rock art from being destroyed. So this is why digital preservation is so important. Computer programs like this allow us to study and learn more from rock art that has been destroyed. And most importantly, it allows us to create a record to preserve rock art for future generations. Photo manipulation isn't the only thing that we're doing. We'll hope you'll check out our videos coming soon where we play around with some 3D printing and we even bring a drummer in to play our 2000 year old rock gong. Check out our website for more information and make sure to subscribe to the British Museum's channel. Thank you.